so we're gonna give flounder fishing a shot i'm not a big flounder guy but a lot of people have been reaching out asking for flounder videos so figure what the heck i do want to test out these uh salt strong power prawns heard good things never really tried them so we're gonna just try and set up on this little channel ahead of us and just jig all right so here goes nothing half ounce jig with a uh, power prawn with a little bit of um, procure shrimp figure oh that was a hit right away man that's a good sign I don't know what it was but it was small all right that's what I'm talking about Woo. all right let's get this sucker back in the water that's a nice little beautiful flounder like I said, I haven't really done much of this flounder fishing in a long time. Grew up flounder fishing all the time and loved it. But, you know, when you're younger, you're kind of fall in love with the first fish that you kind of fish for. And you don't really think about exploring or branching out. Recently, you know, in the last like 10 years, done more like sheep's head tog striper fishing than I have flounder. But, um,. I think the same concepts oh look at that hold true i mean oh what the heck sea bass that guy really wanted it man he freaking thumped it but uh same concepts apply i kind of like fishing shrimp uh because you know at a certain part of the summer we start to see a influx of brown shrimp moving in the bay plus you have your local you know mana shrimp that flounder and everything else feeds on so I figure try and match the hatch I do like how um, these are non-rigged shrimp you know I, I do like the voodoo shrimp but I find that you know you're kind of handicapped at a certain depth with a pre-rigged shrimp there we go there we freaking go that's a flounder that's a flatty and a half right there Get him in, man. Look at that thing. He just inhaled. Freaking inhaled that shrimp. Oh, look at that, man. Might have to use the pliers so I don't hurt the guy. Don't want to kill him. There we go. Nice little flatty. There he goes. Now, I'm no flounder guru, man, but I do know a few things that have worked for me in the past, and the biggest thing I find is definitely your uh, drift speed is one of the most important things. I can't tell you how many times I see dudes, you know, while I'm doing other types of fishing that are flounder fishing and they're drifting like, you know, four or five knots because, you know, the wind might be with the tide or or it might be in the middle of the tide when it's just ripping and you know I'm not saying you can't catch them in a fast drift like that but for what I like I like anything from you know a half a knot to two knots tops depending on how deep I'm fishing um, right now we're kind of hovering around half a knot which is, we're getting hits just haven't uh, found any big ones yet Oh, man. That's a sea bass. And that's like one of those things where it's like, I'm not trying to set the hook, honestly, on these smaller sea bass. I'm hoping that by jigging it away from them, it might draw attention to a bigger fish or something like that. There we go. That's a flounder. Not a bad one, actually. If we can get him up. Oh yeah, that's not a bad one. It's not a bad little fluke. Get him back in. Now I think right in the next, I don't know, minute or so, I should be hitting a drop off, and there should be some life on that drop off, at least from what I could remember of where I'm fishing. Like I said, I haven't really done this type of fishing in a while, so I'm kind of going off of memory. Um, 
try not to really look too much at the depth finder unless it's just trying to keep myself on the right path of a drift. Oh, yep, so that was that hit that I was talking about. Maybe it'll come back. Because right now we got a really good drift. It's like literally a half a knot. Covering this little area real slowly. Oh, there we go. That's a flounder. Small one. Oh, easy release. Look at that. <laughs> 